the recording. Okay. Hi, everybody. We're back. Hi, Andy. <laughs> uh, our key pie pie happy hour. And I think uh, tonight we're going to start with uh, Donna Zarbin Byrne, and who I actually had a really awesome studio visit with today. Um, so I'm excited for her to share um, some of the things she shared with me today. And uh, I think we will go ahead and get started. And Donna, you can go ahead and hit the um, share screen button at the bottom. There you go. Perfect. Yay. Yay. And Yay. we're going to do this. And everyone else, try to mute yourself so that when Donna talks, then I only have her uh, picture on. OK. Is, that, is it? Are we good? We're good. OK. So here we go why beauty in nature can be terrifying. My sculpture, <clears throat> my sculpture transforms. Where is this sound? Oh, it's coming from the headphones. Okay. Are we good? Unplug Hold on a second. What did you do? Unplug Here. the back. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Don't tell me when. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Beauty in nature can be terrifying. My sculpture transforms this duality into poetic form. And I'm going to show you tonight a selection of interior installations and individual objects and public sculpture that is all seeking to express the kind of fleeting and temporal awe that I experience in nature. So I have a few videos and this first piece is uh, really historical for me. It's, it's the oldest installation um, in my body of work that I'm showing you, but I'm presenting it because there's something still that's resonating with me in that I'm exploring um, digital media and, and projections. So this is an overall and I have a, a detail and then a little video um, so these are drawings of mine that are projected um, uh, with theatrical lights. And I, I'm going to show you next a video. I might cut it off because it's four minutes and it was pre-made. It might be too long. Um, let's see. So. What's in the way is all your guys' pictures. So let's see. Okay. So this kind of gives you a sense of the digital imagery and the space a little bit more. We're seeing here kind of details of the digital imagery that was embedded in some of the sculptures. Um, There was sound too, but the audio wasn't good, so I left it quiet. The room was green. The lighting is not off. This is all like gel, theatrically gel lit. This was shown in, uh, in Tribeca and at uh, Zoller Gallery at Penn State University in Pennsylvania. So the first, the first uh, image you saw was from Penn State and this is from uh, New York. Uh, this is kind of like about a cultivated space, dream imagery, um, and this is a carved plexiglass bed that had this uh, digital imagery similar to what you saw, um, what I opened up with, that you're experiencing it by peering down and seeing your reflection 
these are um, plexiglass pieces. So there was like a lot of light play in the space in, in many forms, in the projected drawings, in slide projections, in a plexiglass mirror. I'm gonna to get to one more part of this and then I'm gonna shut it off. Um, this is, yeah. So these are handmade paper screens and sculptures and there were also film that was projected into the, the sculptures. And it's all these aspects that I'm interested in still pursuing in an installation that I'm developing at the moment. So this is, uh, gives you a feeling for it. And I will go on to the next slide for the sake of time. Uh, okay, so here is, um, a quieter installation. I have a video to show you that these are all subtly kinetic. And um, this one is called Bowl of Prayers and it's um, the kind of wing uh, petal forms are fabricated on little hinges and so they, they have movement to them. Here's a detail. And this next uh, is a different piece, but I, I'm just gonna give you, this kind of gives you an idea of the kind of subtle movement that happens with these pieces. So I'm aiming for poetry. <laughs> these are um, encaustic with photo transfers and drawings kind of give you an idea how I'm handling the paper. Um, craft and, and, and the mark of my hand are really important. Here's um, another installation. So most of them are variable in in size because they usually work with the space that they're um, that they'll be that they'll go in. So here's a detail. Oh, here's a detail of um, one of those pieces. They're they're quite spatial. This comes out like about 13 inches from the wall. It's kind of the hard. The hard thing about these zoom things is that there's like no dialogue, right? I feel like I'm kind of just talking, but anyways, you're so doing, you're doing great. Thanks. Okay. So this is a, um, in my studio in Maui, I have this wall of flowers. It's always changing as I make things, but this, this shows an example. Uh, I got to get rid of, okay, let's see. of what they do. My hibiscus plant is always bouncing around the wind and making me smile as I come and go through my gate. And so I've just gotten interested in movement. And so a lot of pieces that I'm doing now are on springs, wall pieces. <laughs> so whimsy plays a part, even though whimsy has a lot to do with what I'm I make, even though a lot of my concepts are dealing with the temporal nature of life. Um, okay, I, I always lose my arrow. Okay, let's see, here we go. This is a detail of, um, oh, of one of those pieces. Can you all, are you blocked by the gallery view or is it just me? Um, it's just you. Oh, um, everyone okay. can go up to the upper right hand corner and choose speaker view. Um, but at least, at least in our, uh, the recording, it's just you talking. There's, there's just your picture. Oh. So this is, um, I'm, I'm working really with a lot of vocabulary forms. I collect things, I dry plants, I 
cast into metal and I fabricate and I start with a natural object, but then kind of catapult off a cliff, if you will. And these are uh, dried banana stems that I've been using for a number of years in my work. And I like them because when I, when they dry, they feel like vertebrae to me. And I like poetry and dreams. I like um, a number of, of um, interpretations that can and associate with <clears throat> here's um i've got an echo when i'm speaking but anyways this is a a thorn i'm going to ask everyone to please mute yourself again um because your sounds in your houses are coming through and interrupting uh her presentation thank you so these are um thorns that are cast and then I've fabricated the leaf forms and it's paper and encaustic and just all kinds of um, found objects. This is, um, this kind of shows you this profile view. It's um, a banana stem again and it's about the many associations of plants and human parts. It started out as very structural and it became this kind of very feminine growing thing as I started taking protea parts and uh, that are dried and painting them and attaching them to the form. So that just goes to say that I, I really, I may start out with a concept, but I let my materials dictate as I'm working. Um, this piece is also on a spring and it's cast thistle and um, thorns. This is, this is pretty new off the press. Um, this is all from a, the smaller works are from a series called uh, Inner Landscapes. And I, I like to combine the, the structure and strength of metal with the more delicate and ephemeral parts and kind of dangerous. I like um, mixing beauty and danger as I work with thorns a lot, for example. Donna, you have a question um, and it's a question I asked you today too. Um, do you treat the uh, raw material like the banana and the plants with anything that will preserve them? Yes, yeah, so I, First, I thoroughly dry them. Some of them are in my studio for months at a time, but by the time I finish um, painting them, they usually have a, um, a layer of like gel medium around them um, as a top coat, a final coat. And I just bought some resin. I'm gonna start experimenting with resin to give an even harder kind of almost like you're looking in an encasement. Um, and it is, I'm very interested, for example, in casting the banana stems because it is a form that I have as a light motif and I'm using it again and again, but they've really held up amazingly well. Um, this is cast, so that's a thistle. Um, and this, this is a pod that has not been cast, but they're all dried and then sealed. This is more, this is a personal piece, but it, it's also very indicative of just translating materials in a way to express what's going on. This piece was made after I lost my, both my parents very suddenly and it's called um, My Tears, Your Bottle. And it's cast bronze and the, the tears are fabricated from silver, um, like lace. And so even though these are formally a little bit different, I do tend to use vessels in my, my work as symbolic of the human element 
that enters in like the, the other earlier work you saw in bowl of prayers. Uh, okay. What I keep doing is losing my arrow. Whoa. One sec. Where am I? Okay. So now I'm beginning some public sculpture. This is um, an interior work and the public sculpture is uh, obviously a little bit different because my subject matter is dictated by the site, but I, I like that. I, I don't mind working with the content um, that's dictated by a place. In fact, it's really meaningful to me to be able to find my way of working within um, a public setting. So this, this piece is like um, 16 feet by like eight feet tall and it fits along a, um, a curving wall. So the whole piece gently curves and it's, it's supposed to be, it represents an illuminated manuscript uh, made in the three dimension. And it is, it's a synagogue, a permanent installation that's outside of Chicago. I'm so sorry, I can't, I did this today with Andy, I lose my, um, Oh, here it is. Okay, here's the detail of it. So this, it's it's working with the symbolism of the pomegranate through every stage of its botanical life. There's another detail. So this is a uh, public sculpture that's outside of Chicago. It was, uh, it's at a fire station and I'm playing with the whimsical elements of fire and water. And this project was developed from the ground up. Um, and so the landscaping was done by myself. Um, it's a concrete walkway with the alchemical symbols of um, fire and water. And then there's a poem by a um, alchemist from the 15th century and I, I use a lot of text in my work, even if it's hidden sometimes underneath layers of paint. So here's just some details. Here is um, a public work that is in uh, San Antonio, Texas. And this was a massive work that dealt with the whole concept of this community and where they're from, which um, is mostly uh, Mexico. And so this, this installation is um, in the courtyard and is more a contemporary notion of people taking root. The whole courtyard is uh, landscaped with river rock and you can walk through the sculpture. It's intended to be like a drawing in space this gives you a little idea of the scale. And there I am working on that, that nest. It's steel and copper and, and bronze. This is the same um, commission, but it's in another courtyard and I've created a landscape seating area with highly symbolic, the tile work, around the berm is all handmade and it's Spanish referring to the, um, the colonialization of the, when the Spaniards came into Mexico. And when you enter the space, there's these kind of stile that are dealing with the, the history of the community. So all of these are symbols and imagery from Mexico. Um, this one is very close to that seating area and makes reference to Diego Rivera and kind of the beginning of things, aquatic imagery. And in the children's playground, this is um, mosaic walkways that have um, English and Spanish games and rhymes and there was a lot of community involvement with it. Um, I have a really very brief walk through. You can kind of see the poetry in Spanish. Um, 
Whoa. And then this is um, a residency that I did with um, farmers in uh, Western State, Illinois. And we took uh, drawings and blew them up on GPS systems. And then I worked with the, the and they were on fallow, it was on like fallow grant, uh, ground that the farmers were, you know, having the land rest. And so we cut out the, um, the drawings on the tr tractors, mapped it out with a GPS system. And then this is seen from the air, it was on 15 acres. And it's um, a Mandela of uh, hope and faith, what uh, farmers need to do their, to do their job. Um, the la oh, 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 let me put, let me stop this. Uh, My name is Donna oh, well, Sarbenburn. Here's a little film I did. I'm a sculptor. I live and work in Texas and Hawaii. I've been called a gardener of the dreamscape because my work is cultivated from nature and reverie. Beauty in nature can be terrifying. My sculpture transforms this duality into poetic form. I create biomorphic abstractions that are referential yet re-envisioned. My work journeys to the edge of what is known and then goes off the cliff and catapults into imaginary forms. I play with whimsy and reflection, scale, fantasy and truth. My sculptures are metaphors for the human condition, our lives that cycle between strength and fragility. I realize that something magical can happen as I transform materials into form. The core of my work is a spiritual quest to express the poetic and transfer this as a gift to the viewer. My practice includes working in many materials and media. I collect all kinds of detritus from scrap metal parts to seed pods, roots, and banana stems. These create a vocabulary of forms that I cast, fabricate, and assemble. I work with encaustic and paper, and they're stretched over linear wire structures. I like to merge delicate elements with the strength of metal. My process is slow, which allows for discovery. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was initially shocked as many of us were, and I felt paralyzed, unable to continue with my current body of work. I turned to photographs that I'd taken of Mauna Kahalawai for reprieve. I had been wanting to do something with that magical dark mountain that seems to hover and float in the sky. It has become the pandemic project for me. This image has been a comfort to me, like a landscape of longing, perhaps as a reminder of the resiliency of nature. It's still in process. I feel really fortunate to be an artist and have a way to process all these changes. Yet I care about the wider effect and how other people are being impacted and our future. Please be well. Thank you for coming to my studio. Aloha. That's it. I did that film um, as uh, Andy had suggested that we make the Hawaii, that we make um, a film. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, that was like hours and hours and I couldn't have done it alone, but I'm, I'm really excited. <laughs> it turned out great. Thank you. I have a version with no music with just birds and I'm, of course, I'm not going to take the time, but I'd, I'd love, if I posted both of them, I'd love the feedback to see which is preferable. I, I'm i always take the music out, but that's just... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you're well, not I have a music video. <laughs> okay, cool. No, that's, that's uh, well, I have one with just birds, and it's yeah, very nice. Yeah, and you too. have bird sound. I mean, your birds are outside your studio, so that makes yeah. sense to have that as kind of like that... Uh, um, influential sound while you're in your studio, right? It gives the viewer also an opportunity to feel like they're in the studio with you. Okay, that's, uh, that's good. I, I'm a novice at this, but anyways, I appreciate everyone's attention. Hey, hey, Donna, it's Betty. Hi, Betty. Hi, you remember we spoke, you know, when you were uh, doing your key? Of course. <laughs> and um, I continue to be crazy in love with your work. Um, okay. 
And all I can say is bravo. I mean, it really, some of them really touch me and I want them. <laughs> Although I could not have your work in my house because I have two cats. And they would look at those little floating flowers and think that that was the best thing ever and destroy it immediately. Um, <laughs> I have one little uh, challenge for you though. Okay. Because you said both in the, I think it was the film, and when you began speaking earlier today about nature being terrifying. And although I agree that nature can be terrifying, I don't think your work goes there. Okay. I don't think there's anything terrifying about your work. So I would challenge that word. I wouldn't challenge anything about the work. The work is amazing. But I, would, I, I think that word is, um, it's, it's not quite what you're dealing with. I mean, maybe you could say threatening and it wouldn't sound quite as extreme. Yeah. But I'm not even sure threatening is the exact word. But I would just challenge you to, you know, really look at your work and say, is any aspect of this terrifying? I personally don't think so. But, you know, I'm seeing all your work digitally from a distance and not to scale, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I would, um, I, I would suggest you consider another word. I well, mean, you, that's the writer in me. I care about that. Oh, no, I agree with you, Betty. I've been, I agree. I've been, um, I, I've been busy, but I'm intending on um, revisiting this with, with Mike because he so generously offered mm -hmm. to work with us. And I, I have all kinds of notes, and I'm trying to, you know, it's like I started, I put in the word sublime and terrifying because it's this kind of awe. It's almost like, in awe, you know how nature can be so beautiful that it's almost scary? And Well, and I think that nature can be so beautiful it's scary, but I don't think your work deals with that. So that's, that's the challenge I'm putting out to you. I think that the whole idea of the sublime and the terrifying, I mean, that's very straight out of the theory of romanticism in the 19th century. Um, but I think you're after something much more nuanced and subtle. And that, I think that nuanced, subtle, as you, you kept saying, poetic quality is, you know, you've got it. It's amazing. So I would rather you didn't language it in, in, that, in those terms. That's just, that's my two cents. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry it's in that film, but um, I am really still struggling with that and I really, appreciate the the feedback got to keep i keep i totally away. agree i totally agree donna with what betty is saying and having lived in the wilderness off and on and been you know scared shitless sometimes um out there um i think your work is um and and, and it's not to say that because it's totally beautiful and sublime that the the terrifying part of it is necessarily negative, but that it is intense. And um, your work is intense, but it seems to me more intense in a lyrical, yeah, calming way. Like, yeah, you know, you, know yeah. you are having a great time on your hike, and everything's going well, and. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, uh, it's cheerful. Your work has a cheerfulness to it. I would say your work has a delight to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, yeah. um, it's got this um, lightning quality, you know, not lightning like in a storm, but it lightens you up. You know, it lightens you up. And God knows we need that these days. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just think that it's important to remember that the way you talk about the, your work sometimes frames the way people see it. Yeah. And I don't want you to use language like terrifying and then people are like, well, what the heck? I don't see anything terrifying. What is she talking about? And I then think they think, am I missing it? And is yeah. she trying to put something over on me? You know, people. People are uh, skeptical of contemporary art, so we gotta. Um, yeah, be I wasn't sure about that, that word. 
I think that this is no excuse, but that was like this consensus of key pie pie. And I'm like, okay. So I kind of went with it, but it's still, it's my thing and I have to take ownership of it. Um, and our presentations were quick. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I made that film with the, but I probably could. No, edit. no, you should, you should, don't worry about no, it. No, it's fine, leave For, it. Yeah, leave it. We're going forward here. Yeah. We're not talking yeah. about, oh, go back and change everything. Next We're talking one. about the next one you'll. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that the whole thing about making beautiful things, the whole word, the whole idea of beauty in contemporary culture borders on pretty. And so I think with language, it's a very interesting challenge to tackle the beautiful in, in art and language without it being sentimental. That's, that's what I'm really trying to get at, like the femoral qualities in life, you know, that we're just kind of like passing through. And so I think that lyrical is a good word, uh -huh. um, sublime. And, and so I think it's just trying to express in, in words how you deal with the language of beauty without becoming saccharine. I don't think my work is saccharine, but. Not at all, yeah. I, I, read all. A, I read a really good quote today and it went something like, beauty has the right to live wherever it wants to. And I thought, you know, you find it wherever it is and there it is. And we as artists get to notice it and respond to it. So, you know, I just say to you, go girl. Yeah. Do it. Chris Rico just also reminded us that ugly is also beautiful. Yes. Yes, so, it is. Yeah, thanks Chris, because that was a great comment. But I also wanted you to think about your use of materials literally are, and think about those things, these really, firm, stiff, hard metals that are associated with masculinity, and then they are covered by the ephemeral, they are covered mm -hmm. by the mm -hmm. soft, translucent. Um, so maybe think in terms of those too, right? So, I mean, just the literal use of your materials and, and literally what those materials represent um, can also be a way of describing the work. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a really important point. The materiality of your work is so important. And here's another word I want to throw out to you, Donna. Marvelous. Because mm. I think your work is marvelous. Does anyone have any questions? No questions. Oh, let me uh, quickly go through the chat and see if we missed anything. Um, let's see. Everyone loves the dancing flowers. Um, there were uh, comments made that the work looks exotic. Um, let's see. The other people also agreed that the music is a little distracting in the video. Um, what else? Okay, I think that, um, I think, oh, uh, Michelle is asking if, USDA ever had issue with the natural materials while shipping? No. First of all, most of the pieces that I take, I carry on on the airplane and go under. And I don't think that anybody gets it or relates to what they are. But I've never, ever had trouble. And I've been doing this for 15 years. But you're not bringing things on to Maui. You're taking them off of Maui. Right. But I'm bringing them back, too. I oh. travel back and forth with my art. All right. All over the world. I take these little things with me and work on them as I go. Um, so, but most of the time, it, I'm leaving Maui. It's true. But by the time they are becoming art, I don't think that they... I had more trouble with my tools if I carried on like all my little metalworking tools and my torch that I didn't want to set under. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a joy to, to uh, for the TSA. 
Stephanie has a question for you. She wants to know if you shot the video on your phone. No, okay. that that video was shot with a by my family member that had a a, cam, a camera. Okay. Was it shaky? He did not use a tripod. No, it's not shaky. She just wondered if. if yeah, no, he has a really good um, um, camera, and I mean, I spent about a week on the narrative and coming up with imagery and sequence. And then we did a bunch of shots and then tried to integrate the, um, the, the, the narrative with the images. But he had a, a ring and I have some photo lights. Um, light was a big problem, even though my studio is light. It's, I've got a big overhanging porch. So uh, he used a, you know, a nicer camera than a phone. Um, also, everyone in commented um, there. You have multiple comments on how impressed they are with your public art. Um, oh, yeah. You. So just so that you know that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you for great. your your discussion. Brava. 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 It's great. Let's see. And okay. We have, do we? Have, who's our next presenter? Jody Endicott. Jody! Jody! Are you there? She was here. Hmm. Do we lose you, Jody? Oh, you're, you're, we can't I, hear you. Unmute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Jody, you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> Can you do it, Andy? Can you mute, I'm, unmute her? I'm trying, I but. I did it three times. Oh, there you go. Now we can hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. So if everyone will mute themselves and then she can share her screen and then, uh, and then we can have Jody uh, give a presentation. Okay. This is gonna be interesting because to be honest, I am not as put together as I would like to be. So, I believe there's magic in our interactions and I create art that sparks surprise and magical conversation. <laughs> so today, we are going to have a magical conversation because I'm not sure if what I did is actually gonna work, but I'm gonna try it. I, um, I didn't leave my, my place today that I had your, the studio visit, Andy, so uh, I'm winging it through email. So what I did was I emailed myself all the photos and I put them on the screen in order. But if I close this screen, will you still see me? Let me see. So do you guys see my screen now? No. Oh, okay. No. How do I, how do I get to be the person with the screen? Uh, go down to the bottom where that little green thing says share screen and hit share screen. Okay, can you see my screen now? No. no. Um, you're going to have to pick the screen that you want. Um, another window will pop up if you have multiple things open on oh. your desktop. And All right. Okay, screen. right here. How's that? Can you see that? Yes. 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 See? Surprise! Um, thank you, Mike O'Connor. Um, all right, I'm going to start with more focusing on my process and evolution. I've done a lot of uh, public sculpture, but I'm not really going to focus too much on that because I wanted to bring it more to the present and I'm dealing with materials, all kinds of different materials. And I am a materials person, just like Donna and um, who just inspired me in so many ways. So what I would like to, as a, as a fellow of Key Pai Pai, I feel that my um, purpose in being with this group is to share information and share information about how I work. And so one of the first things I'd like to do is tell you about this book. It's called The Sculpture Reference. And it's basically an encyclopedia of, um, of all kinds of things you want to know that you never knew you wanted to know. 
Now, I don't know how I'm going to get to my next slide. Can you see that slide? No. This slide? Is this a different slide for you? No? We don't see anything. You just uh, reduced the slide that you were showing us. How about that? Can you see that? No. No. Oops. Where did it go? Hmm. Okay. Hold on just a second. Because I have lost you off of my screen. Um, it is a, it's like an encyclopedia on all kinds of materials. And so I'm a little unusual in that I do a lot of public sculpture out of hand-built concrete. And so I'll, I'll take you through that process. And there was a picture of, of my work in, in this, but it's not showing up right now on all these different slides. So what I'm going to do is just go with the material. So here's, now you, we're still seeing the same one, aren't we? No, we see it. You see the trash? Yes. Okay. Um, so basically what that is, is trash from Midway Atoll that has been brought back. Um, and so that's how my work starts. And there is a, it's so weird that some of these images are disappearing. Oh, here we go. Sorry about this, you guys. Um, this is a polar bear. You can see the materials here. As I looked at those materials, I was thinking, well, it would be interesting to start with this polar bear and then um, go from there to decide what, um, what it could be and how it could be filled. And so I'm going to show you the next slide, which is of the um, seal, where I took many of those materials and I've used foam and wire. Can you see that one? No. No. Oh. There. Now we, now we can see it. You see the, the polar bear, right? No, now we see the seal. Oh, you do? Okay. This is, I'm really, I, you guys, I really apologize. This is not the way I wanted this to go today. It's okay. But we'll get there. Um, so you're not seeing what I'm seeing on my screen here of a booby bird with concrete in it? No. Okay, new share. I'm seeing what I have to do. Okay, so then once I get it roughed out like that, like the seal, then I move on to, I'm going to use this one as an example. I start to put the concrete in. And so all these things are pieces of single use plastic that we've discarded, we've bought, we've used, and we've discarded. And it's kind of like what, you know, indicative of what we're doing with the people in our world and um, our environment. And now so we, later Now we on, see the booby bird on the concrete. Okay. Now, um, later on, when it gets completely filled, oh, that's not the right one, sorry. Um, it'll be this one. Is that the, are you seeing the seal? Yes. Okay. So the seal is completely concrete. Now it's, um, and you see more like a Louise Nevelson taking the actual shape and the form and making it more monochromatic. Um, these are details of uh, Donna, what I'd like to call um, ugly beautiful. Um, it is kind of beautiful, but it's also, there's an ugliness to it. This is a, an example of um, on the seal, I included this dump truck that was a child's toy that's been floating out there that Noah brought back from Midway Atoll and it says dump. And you can see some of the other materials that are there um, have symbols of being uh, the uh, re recyclable materials, but they're not really being recycled. And so this one is the, um, Kind of in my studio, you see the penguins, or is that the yes, seal? Yes, penguins and the seal in the background. Okay, so the penguins also, each one of these include, um, they're the water, the land, and the air. The water, yeah, and um, they include 
the materials that also came back from Midway at all. And so let me go down a little bit further. Um, so I tried to keep this really short. And also I'm, I'm working on a series on the stock market that is actually made of the pieces that we, things we buy every day from um, a Starbucks cup to, and we throw away the plastic lid and, and other things like that. So, um, gosh, you guys, I didn't get you quite enough information, but then Andy suggested that I show you perhaps the um, place that, I, that I'm at today, which is um, we're looking at how do we, we acquired this property and it has multiple buildings on it. And one of the buildings has my gallery space, which I showed you, which you're looking at now. I'm gonna click on um, this other property, the outside house. And you can see that it's kind of in a residential neighborhood, but we're, we're getting ready to, um, we'd love to have it be a place where writers and artists and architects would be attracted to come and stay here for, you know, a, a, a period of time, not just a month, not just a vacation, but to really come here and maybe um, do a residency and, and delve into their work. It's extremely quiet here. So I'll show you the little rental property that we have. It has its own private opening gate and then it has a separate building and inside the building are um, the, are you able to see this at all? Yes. This is the building. Okay. So you didn't see the picture of the house, did you? Yes, I, yeah. Oh, you did, okay. So this is inside and those big closets are all on wheels. So it can be um, made to expose a 20 foot long wall to work on. The floors are concrete and um, it's also set up for someone to live and work there. Um, and these, these boxes move around and so everything is transformational. And so I wanted to let you know about this because it could be a place that someone would be interested in. And if you are, let me know. Um, the house right now, my niece is staying in, but um, we, it's basically a little art compound. And I could, I could take you for a little walk if you want or show you more of my work if I change over the screen, but I apologize that this is not like as good as it could get. So if I close this, Andy, do I, um, you won't see the different pieces in the different slides anymore. So I did that. Now, what do you see? Just me? Not yet. It's slow. Um, hmm. Well, I am out here in the middle of the Pacific. Stop participant sharing. Okay, now we see just you. Okay, all right. So um, I could take you on a little walk and show you a few more pieces if you want. Or, um, but is that, would that be good or? Yeah, I, 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 I hope everyone's listening. Um, I got a really beautiful tour of that property today. It is a great place if you are a painter or a sculptor. Um, she also has room uh, to do printmaking. Um, if you're looking to go to Oahu and spend a month and just make work, this property is like a really perfect place um, to do that. So I talk, you know, get a hold of Jody and talk to her about it. But um, I think from a, a a studio standpoint, it's a really awesome opportunity to get off the mainland, get on the island, spend some time um, and and making some work in a in a better situation than what we're currently experiencing here on the mainland. Yeah, it's very quiet. So and those, and those for those artists who are on the East Coast, if you're trying to escape the um, the winter, this would also be a great in the winter would be a great time to uh to work in on oahu so do you st still see my screen we do oh great i'm gonna just take you on a little walk then how about that that's great so jody as you walk can i ask you a qu can i talk to you about one thing yes please 
Hi, it's Betty. Hi. Hi, Betty. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I hate to sound like a broken record, but I have a question for you about what you say about your work. All right. I don't think magic is the main thing you're doing with your work. And I'm not, right. sure, I'm not sure that I think that saying that your work is magical does it justice. Because I think your work is very profound and makes um, important environmental comments and um, asks us to look at the world in a different way. And I would rather hear you talk about those things than, um, than uh, uh, focus on the, on the term magic. All right. Um, that is, I understand because I saw what you were saying to Donna how terrifying didn't fit quite fit with her work. Uh -huh. uh, so I see, I understand what you're, what you're saying. And I think there is magic that happens, but it's very emotional. Um, I don't know if any of you guys got to see that movie that was, that I posted in the fellows. And I don't know if you can see this work. So I did these birds. Some of the, and I put concrete in a lot of things. This is concrete on a canvas. These are, are you able to see these all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, and, and I love them. I think they're fabulous. Thank and you. And I think that, you know, using language about art, one of the best things it can do is point the viewer to deeper understanding. Yeah. And to say that your work is just, it is magic to focus on that. I mean, all work is magic. All transformation is magical. But your work is not just transformational. I mean, you are making profound environmental comments. And I, I would hate for that not to be up front when people read you or hear you. Um, because yes. this work is so it's important. More sophisticated than using a very simple, almost cliche word as magic with fine art. Your, your, the concepts are deep. The, yes. the, um, the message is meaningful and you're editorializing with your materials and that's not magic. That's, that's deep thought. That's deep dedication. That's, that's serious purpose. Um, I totally agree with Betty. I agree with you too, Betty. Um, I well, do. Well, thank you. But I, I want to be really clear. I am not being critical of you or your work. Your work is killer. Oh, I mean, I, I think I think like that seal, they, that guy. I mean, yes. that's crazy wonderful. Isn't and that even, crazy? Yeah, that, that says change maker on it on some kid's baseball bat that floated out there for 35 years that I got to embed in the seal that probably could have eaten that bat. Yeah, I, th I think that this is a work that I wish a lot of people could see. And, um, and I think you'll get more exhibits if you talk about the environmental content of your work. All right. And I think too, Jody, that Andy's right. It, it you know, that, that seal just blew me away. It's, it, Saying it's magical is not gonna matter. Saying that it's what it is and that you know all these components have been out in the water for as long as they have makes that seal like a relic. And yeah. that yeah. is yeah. what is so meaningful in your work. I mean, it just, yeah. it's gripping. It's like a contemporary fossil. It See? is. See, there you go. Now that's a really cool phrase. Yeah. Well, you go, go, Jody. You start out by saying, "I make contemporary fossils," <laughs> and then you tell them how you make them and why. There you go. That's out of your mouth. Yeah, I wouldn't have got there. And you know, I just want to say one thing, Betty. I'm a I was a professional writer doing PR and marketing for quite a long time. And I got redlined by my boss once with only one word left on the full page. I can't believe she did that. One word. But 
since then, my, um, my ego is not in this. And we're all there to get better and to find the right words. So I thank you for what you're saying and for what you're able to draw out of me by saying those things. So anyway, um, you're right. So this is the space that is my gallery space. Everything again is on wheels. And so this, I'm gonna do a little walkthrough now. So there's three buildings here on this property. There's one that um, is the house that you saw. Now we're going out of my gallery into this open courtyard, which is in an L shape so that I have my work here. I have my sculptures here. Sculptures over here. This is the back of the house. Okay, and under, so there's the, the um, I don't know if you can still see it, the polar bear and the seal and the, and the booby. And under the house, there's space here, even though I have it set up to play ping pong. This is a work table that that top comes off. and. There's slats here so we can put our paintings underneath and that. There's a sink and laundry here. So that's a shared thing. And then um, I believe I can take us through the, into the building so you can actually see, see it. So this is the live workspace. It has one door over here to go into the classroom. And um, this is a sleeper sofa. This is the wet bar. There's no range here, but it's all furnished. Little oven, refrigerator, brand new bathroom that we just put in. Can I come? Can I come now? Yes, I would love it if you would. <laughs> these, were, um, these were boxes that had the puka board, just like in my gallery, to hang which uh, I was inspired by when I went to Japan. So these are closets, but these can move and be pushed off to all sides. So there's two of these, then there's the pune bed. So looking back, the wet bar, the bathroom, the sleeper sofa, the pune bed, and then the door opens. This is actually the entrance, the private entrance to this space. And so this is the courtyard um, that one comes through or the little outdoor space. Over on the other side of the wall is the Korean consulate. And over on, through this connecting gate is my gallery. So hopefully that gives you a sense of where we are. And then I'll show you, it has a little, a little walkway along here to the gate, to the outdoors, um, to the carport, there's street parking. And this is where we'd be, you know, people could come in and, and visit privately. And so, yeah, so we're in a neighborhood. It's very quiet. It's five minutes from the Honolulu Museum of Art and the Hawaii State Art Museum. And so, these are the benches that I got from Ella Moana Shopping Center for $50 each and the ballast. And so you can get a sense, it's, it's just a really pretty place. So it's waiting for people to be able to come here and stay. We're, right now we're looking for uh, six months, but if someone were going to share it with someone, you know, part, half, half or whatever, that's a possibility too. So. Do you have any questions? I'm back. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. Thank you so much. It was great seeing all that. Thank you, Jody. I hope I get to see you guys over here one day. Oh, you know it. I really do. I'm, I feel so grateful to know all of you. And those I don't know personally yet, I look forward to knowing you more. Mm -hmm. so, do you have any questions about the work or anything else? Wondering, um, your work, is it very heavy? It's made of cement and all of these other materials, but 
it looks very heavy. Um, yes, it used to be very, very heavy. The seal I can lift myself mostly, um, you know, using a towel and that, uh, because I'm, I switched over to foam, to doing a foam core. But normally I would, you know, if it's an outdoor sculpture, like, um, what will I say? The, like the, if you go on my website, you'll see all the sculptures on there are very heavy. The sculpture. So how do you, how do you manipulate them yourself? Do you, you know, you're able to move them around or do whatever you do by yourself with these things? Well, I, um, I work smart. No, I need, I need help. Um, we made these, these are in, on the city hall, hall campus. We made them so they could come out and we'd roll the tubes like Flintstones and then we'd put them in where they needed to go. So these were, this was my thesis exhibit at the Contemporary Museum. And, um, but the seal, maybe I can show you. See, watch. I can just lift it up myself. Oh, wow. Know? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, they're heavy, but they're not that heavy anymore. <laughs> yeah. It just depends on what I can, where they're going and what I'm going to do with them. Like this bear is hollow here. See, hollow, <laughs> floats around the surface. Yeah. Thank you. Concrete is so fun, you guys. It's like playing in the sandbox again. Mm. Does anyone have any more questions? Just no? uh, the question is, um, is concrete like plaster? Does it, does it firm up really fast and you got a race? Well, I've um, been working with it for a long time. The way, the reason I worked with it was because I got pregnant as I was applying to graduate school and I knew I wouldn't be able to work in cast bronze and some of the more toxic materials. So what happened was I went into the yellow pages and I asked a Mason if he would come over and teach me everything he knows for $50, which was crazy. Um, and he came over and he was like a Jimmy Buffett kind of character and he did. He taught me how to mix it. I had already had an armature there so I could frame it up. And then I started playing around with it and I found that I can accelerate it if I add fast setting concrete that um, will, you can buy fast setting concrete that will set up in, in like five or 10 minutes. Concrete actually becomes 90% strong or 95% cured in um, the first 24 hours. But after 24 hours, it takes about two weeks to really get to 100%. But if you mix in fast setting, you can kind of control how fast it's going to go off. You can also add in vermiculite or other things to make it um, fiberglass, to make it stronger um, and lighter. I've just found that now to work with it more as a, as a surface, coat that maybe is a few inches thick is is better for me rather than for what I'm doing now and the plastics are light so if I combine them together that helps too I, did that answer your question thank you thank you that was great thanks all right well thank you Jody uh, great presentation. I totally enjoyed your studio visit today. Um, that was really amazing getting to see all of the work and the property and uh, hopefully some of our fellows will take advantage of um, your beautiful space there and being able to spend some time in Hawaii and make work and I, what I think is one of the most inspirational places on the planet. Um, and I think that's it. We had lots of com uh, lots of comments from the chat uh, saying how beautiful the work is. And uh, also uh, they're looking, a lot of people said looking forward to meeting you in person. 
And yeah. there were comments about inspiring art tonight. And thank you for the presentations. Love the work in the studio tours. And I think that's it for tonight. And we will see you guys uh, probably next Friday. I have p powwow starting uh, next Saturday. So we'll see. Catherine might have to run the whole gig next Friday, uh, depending on who signs up. Uh, but that is it for our happy hour. Um, enjoy. And, uh, and that was a very, another nice Powhana evening with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Thanks, Andy. And one of the artists is Diana, who you've worked with in Hawaii just recently. And, um, it, and if you are busy, uh, Betty, number one, will... What? What? <laughs> what? What? Betty Brown. Bouncing <laughs> Betty Brown. I'm bouncing. I'm bouncing. Yes, I will help you, you, Catherine. I'll be in there okay, working so with you. We'll be the team that runs the, <laughs> runs the meeting. And, um, so next week it's going to be um, Diana... <laughs> It are Di yeah, Diana, and then it may be Betty, I mean, um, uh, Lillian. Lillian. We'll, see we'll, we'll, get, we'll figure that out. We'll get it to yeah. Yeah, we'll get it What we're going to have to do with Lillian is just uh, run the presentation on this end while she talks. So, okay. so Andy, if you're not going to be with us next week, yeah. um, Dropbox the um, I will. PowerPoint yeah. to me. If I can't do it, I'll, I'll give everyone plenty of time. But thank you everyone for showing up again. And I love spending my Friday nights with all of you. And it's so, it's so amazing and wonderful. And I'm always inspired to start my weekend after having such um, great presentations and feeling the love from everyone. And uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>